Fix it! Week four, fix it! Today, we're going to start going over a few things. Some are reviews, some are new. The review for fix it um, is we are now this week, look in your binder, look at your yellow page, we are this week adding VSS. The VSS opener, that is a very short sentence. It's going to have two to five words. If it has one word, it does not count as a sentence. If it has six words, it does not count as a very short sentence. That does not count as a sentence. That counts as a greeting or an interjection. That is not a sentence. A sentence has a subject and a verb. Now. If it is a sentence that is run, that would be a VSS because it has an understood subject, you, subject pronoun, in there. So that would count as a two-word sentence, but a sentence has to have two words, a subject and a verb. If it doesn't have a subject and a verb, it is not a sentence. Everything okay over there? After I'm done explaining. Uh huh. Nobody gets their week four paper while I'm explaining because then people will be looking at their paper instead of following along with what we're talking about. Okie doke. So on your, in your um, binder, underline number six, VSS. We now have number ones, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes, and number Ts. The only one we haven't added yet is the number Q. Today we are going to be adding quotation marks to our list. So underline quotations. This is something else. Um, the summary of this will be on the back of this grammar card that says quotations, amazingly enough. Let me read you what the book says. I am going to sit to do this. Quotations. Enclose direct speech in quotations but not indirect, which usually begins with that. It is beautiful, but not as lovely as our kingdom, observed the third sister. Open quote, it is beautiful, comma, but not as lovely as our kingdom, comma, close quotes, observed the third sister, period. In contrast, the Little Mermaid thought that the world above held infinite charm. That's an indirect quote. It's what she thought. She's not thinking, the world above holds infinite charm. She thought that, therefore, no quotes. Elijah. Okay, Eliana, do you know what he's talking about? Okay. Anything that's close to what he said, please stop doing that. Isaac. Okay, everyone needs to behave appropriately. Eliana, I'm sorry your stomach hurts. If you need to do something about it, you may do something about it, but we're not gonna be distracting about it. Elijah, if someone is distracting you, you are not going to make it better by mocking them and imitating what they're doing. If they're being distracting and you do the same thing, then you are also being distracting. Elijah and Eliana, that is a warning for each of you. All right, so um, in direct quotations, begin with that and they do not take quotes. When narrative sets up a quotation with a speaking verb, add a comma. The Little Mermaid asked, comma, open quotes, did you actually see the people, question mark, close quotes, pattern, speaking verb, comma, quote. This narrative, known as the attribution, can come before, after, or in the middle of the quote. When a spoken sentence is interrupted, set the attribution off, oh, hold on. I just realized that this isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Hold on. What? 
Stop looking at her. Stop. Just stop looking at her. She's not being loud. If she has a stomach ache, then she has a stomach ache. She's not being loud. You just don't need to look at her. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Yes, I am. Look at me. Um, so when a spoken sentence is interrupted, set the attribution off with two commas. Quote, I am so eager for that day, comma, close quote, sighed the little mermaid, comma, open quote, but it is so far away, period, close quote. Close the first part, begin the second with quotations, keeping the first letter of the continuation lowercase. Commas and periods always go inside closing quotes. Dalton, Aaliyah, and Mason, have you done this kind of thing before with quotation marks and starting and stopping? Okay, cool. Okay, all right. So it should be familiar to y'all if you um, need anything as we're going through it, just let us know. When a new sentence begins after an attribution, end the attribution with a period and capitalize the next word. What? Capitalize. Oh, um, anyone who's done it before. Hey, Elijah, look at me. No, Isaac is blocking the sight of you because you're being distracting, dude. Just block the sight of anyone who's doing something. Isaac is just blocking the sight of you. Um, I am eager for that day, sighed the little mermaid. However, it seems so far away. Open quote, I am eager for that day, comma, close quote, sighed the little mermaid, period. New sentence open quote, capitalize, however, comma, it seems so far away, period, close quote. Exclamation marks and question marks go inside closing quotes when they're part of the material quoted. Otherwise, they go outside. On that, or quote, open quote, capitalize, on that day, comma, may we explore anywhere, question mark, close quote, lowercase, inquired the Little Mermaid, period, as, or, open quote, as capitalized, as long as you stay in the sea, comma, close quote, advised her grandmother, lowercase, period, open quote, capitalized, if you left the sea, comma, you would need legs, exclamation mark, close quotes. When someone is speaking and changes topic, start a new paragraph. Close the first paragraph without quotations and open the new paragraph with them. The missing quotation mark shows that the character has not finished speaking. The opening quotation mark in the next paragraph reminds us that someone is still speaking. You've probably seen that in other things that you've read. Um, and as we encounter that, it'll make sense as you see it. Sentence fragments. Sentence fragments that leave, leave us hanging are a no-no. They usually occur when writers forget to attach a main clause to a dependent one. In conversation, however, fragments are fine if they do not leave us expecting more. An acceptable fragment. Would you like to visit the world above the sea? Oh, yes! Oh, yes, makes sense in that context because you can tell that someone else is answering the question. But if you were just to say in the middle of a formal paragraph, oh, yes, that's not a complete sentence. It does not have a subject and a verb. Personal pronouns. Pronouns. We've got subjective. Yes, we do. Subjective case pronouns are used as a subject. Objective case pronouns are used as the objects of verbs or prepositions. Possessive case pronouns show ownership, no apostrophe. We've um, got a variety of pronouns here. I, me, my, mine, you, you, your, yours, etc. We've been talking about plural or singular and plural pronouns. In Spanish, this should be familiar. Make sure that you are using the appropriate pronoun for the case. You would not say, um, 
that is for I. You'd say that is for me. You wouldn't say that is for you and I. You would say that is for you and me. Make sure that you always use the correct type of pronoun. Um, that falls under um, uh, probably usage or grammar. I didn't specifically include pronouns, but anything that does not sound correct, like cross out any grammatical errors, for example, run on sentences, and if applicable, write the correct construction above. So yeah, this would be grammar. Underline grammar if you haven't already done so. We are looking for run on sentences and for um, pronouns and anything else that they do that doesn't sound right that you need to fix. Isaac. Nope, he can use his book. That's something that we've already talked about. Okay, Judah, that's not helpful. You are not the teacher. I understand we all want to move on, and I understand that they're being annoying, but you adding your two cents worth is not going to make it go any faster. That is a strike. I am the teacher. You are not. Yes. Um, hopefully before three. What time is your dad planning on getting you? Okay. Uh-huh. I understand. Okay. Um, reflexive pronouns are another kind of pronoun. Reflexive pronouns end in self or selves, and they refer back to a noun or pronoun in the same sentence. Her grandmother made it herself. The fish allowed themselves to be stroked. Review the rules on the grammar card for writing numbers. Spell out numbers when written as one or two words. Spell out ordinal numbers, first, second, third. Ordinal means what order they come in. Use numerals for dates. January 1st would be January 1. Use numerals when mixed with symbols. Um, that would be... Um, like 40% for zero percent symbol. Hyphenate compound numbers from 21 to 99 and hyphenate telephone numbers 972-822-3416, for example. Okie doke, that's everything. I'm going to hand out the week four fix-its now. Tamaya's will be in her cubby. Y'all may start doing day one.